Hi everybody, here we are again. It's, uh, it's Thursday and in my little festive workshop um, I've got Finn with me doing the camera work and if you remember what we were doing on Tuesday we were starting one of these lovely little Christmas decorations, the Light Angel, Angel of Light. Okay, and We told the story of how they lit the way for the miners as they, uh, as they made their way to the mines in that uh, far eastern part of Germany, in the All Mountains, the Erzberg region of Germany. So this is what we're going to do. This is where we got to, um, so fairly basic turning, that, uh, that one there, so we're going to work our way through again, and today I did promise we're going to do a little bit of painting as well, so a bit of airbrushing work, we're not going to do the whole thing, but we're just going to get the airbrushes going, explain um, what they are if you haven't seen any of the airbrush um, sections yet, um, and just get us through to completion really, show you the trickier bits if there are tricky bits to it, um, so you can get these all finished up. Nice turning, easy turning. I have um, finished off a few bits since we met last time. Um, we've got our very, very basic piece of turning here. This is the skirt. We had a hole pre-drilled in the skirt, so that's fine. From there on, we can add pretty much like everything I do, the nutcrackers, the smokers, all gets put together with dowel, so a bit of six mil dowel. Um, we're starting to build now, so six mil dowel. And that's going to then make way for the body. Now, I've, I have updated the body since you saw me last. Um, so if you remember, we just turned the body around. You can see the shape of the body here. Okay, we've got a flat on top and on the bottom. This, is, this diameter down here is to match the diameter of the waist. Likewise, the top here is to, um, or the neck rather, is to match the diameter of the bottom of the head that we're about to make. They have a 6mm hole on both sides. What I've done now though is just sanded a little flat on both sides. This is going to take the arm. Now I'm going to bring this up to the camera. Let's bring this up just to show you. Finn, just direct me. Is that can people see what I've done with that flat? So you mm -hmm. see that they're not flats. Well they are flats, but they're at a very slight angle. I want the arms sort of coming out at an angle like that to hold the candles. If you look at our um our ready-made angels and miners of light you can see that they the arms aren't coming out straight they're coming out at an angle you need to be able to uh, sort of separate the candles out so that's why we put a very slight angle on there if someone anybody asks me what angle i have no idea it's just an angle um it's just basically basically so they're not just stood there ridges like that they're doing this okay so think about that when you're sanding it i just tend to sand from above so i can see the rough angle as I'm sanding it, okay? So I can look down on there. So that one, make sure I get the, the front, it well, doesn't really matter at this stage, make sure I get uh, display right. What we'll do, we'll keep the grain running in the same direction so we get something uniform going on here. That can be tap down. There we are. Obviously you're gonna add glue, I would guess. Um, a PVA glue, uh, a wood glue is absolutely fine. These um, dowels are designed to expand as they're, you're introducing glue. And then we've got the, the head to go on. We're going to do the same thing in a minute with a little bit of um, dowel, but I want to show you some painting on this one before we go any further. And we also want to fit the hair to it as well, which was where we left off last time. So I'm just going to leave it off for the moment. We'll put him to one side or her to one side and we just crack on with the hair. Now, the, the hole that I drilled last time in here, I've got to check because I can't remember, this hole up through here. So Finn, you might want to come on in now. Just um, a very quick question before we start. Yeah, let me just um, give you that measurement. That was 35 mil, sorry, that hole up there, just to start with. So we've got one here from Robert. He was just saying on a, on a project like this, do you use sanding sealer before you start painting? Um, yeah, make sure that you do a little test spot. Um, sanding seal is good if you're going to use opaque uh, finishes. If you want the the um, the colour to be or the the the, the spirit stain, in my case, um, I don't use a sanding sealer because what you find if you use a sanding sealer then put spirit stain on top, I found that um, obviously the spirit stain doesn't sink into the timber. And on these guys, the 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 um stain is to a point i don't know whether you're going to pick this up finn don't i'll move for you but you can see the grain of the timber through the stain so they're transparent colors 
So I've just used that over the top, sanded them to a point where you won't see scratches. However, if you're going to do the angel, then that's a, an opaque colour. Yes, you can sand that first and put um, an acrylic paint over the top of that. And then you get a nice um, solid colour. You don't see any timber through it. Okay, so all I want to do now is just open this up. If you look at the, I'm going to take the candles out of our light angels just while I move it around for you. If you look at the hair on this one, you can see the sort of shape that I've got here. So we're flat where it touches the head. I've come around a little bit away from the face and then, um, and then similar sort of thing on the outside. I'm going to do that for you now. We're going to make it fit the head and then we can take it off and split it. Oh, I'm using that one, don't use a sanding table. Tool rest. Grab my tool rest. Just open that, that hole up a little bit. You can, of course, just cut your head to 35 mil. Absolutely. No problem at all. That would make perfect sense. My goggles on. And I'm just going to just open it up slightly, like I say. And then we'll shape it. I'm just using the side of a skew here. There we are. I'm just going to try the fit just to make sure we we're big enough there we are that's big enough so that fits in there nicely so now we can think about shaping so we don't want to make this massive it's got to be a tiny little piece of hair so just a very slight curve and again i'll just use the skew i'm just going to bring that light around I yeah let's see no that's fine that right? yeah that's good Just a little, a little curve. We're going to sand that. There we go. And then we'll do the outside shape. So if we look at our head here, we want the hair coming down approximately there. Don't want to part off yet, but I do want to shape. So let's just put a little mark in the parting tool. There we go. And if I grab the spindle gouge, if we, just a very fine curve. Sand that to a little round in a minute. There we are. Now that's enough. That's where we're going to pass off shortly. So, of course, what we're making here is hair for two of the light angels. She's got a quick one here from Callum. He's just saying, um, the deep hollowing uh, vases behind you, uh, the ones that are drying, is just saying what thicknesses do you leave them, uh, do you leave the walls for them to dry? Let's grab one in a moment. And we've got the, the, they do sort of, 
you know, the bigger they go, the thicker they need to be, obviously. Let's grab, there's an ash one. Let's just have a look at that for now. All right, ash is fairly good. You know, if you get the right part of the ash tree, it doesn't move too much. Let me grab one. Bit of acacia here. That hasn't moved too much, it's cobwebby. Similar sort of size in the acacia. I want to try and find one that's moved a lot, but there aren't really many. Um, once you get to that sort of thickness, they, uh, you know, in that sort of form, they're fairly good. Once you start going to bowl forms, different story altogether. Bowl forms tend to move quite wildly. Um, I don't have any here that have moved that bad. But we're looking at maximum, I guess, if you're doing a big bowl, pin, pin pan down to the floor. So this is an ash tree. If you, if you follow me on Instagram at all, you would have seen our family day out um, cutting up an ash tree. This is just one day's work, really. But the once you start going to bigger bowls, then uh, once you start going to bigger bowls, then you're you're starting to get a lot thicker. Thicker. That's probably about inch and a quarter. Um, that one. Um, but there are a real variety of real variety of thicknesses. Um, even down to, to natural edges, you know, it's still kept at the same sort of thickness there. But then as you get down to smaller pieces, you know, so your wall thickness can, can get down a little bit smaller as well. All right. Oh, that's answered that one. Helen? Just fortuitous. We had a load of rough turn bowls just been done there. Um, there we are. There's the hair done. I've just taken a little bit more away just to make sure it's happy. Now we're going to part off. So just straight through. There we are. There's our hair. So that thickness that we've got there is, is going to be just right. It's going to be underneath the hat that we've made. On the head, you can see. Once we cut it and put it back on again. It's going to be just underneath this, this little ridge here. So let's do that now give you an idea it, it, we change slightly when it comes to the minor of lights then his hair um, is slightly different so what I've done on that one is just put a beaded finish I'll grab him and show you take the candles out a minute so on the minor of light we just put a beaded finish on the hair All right, which is again it's just exactly the same thing that, that I've just done um, just as simple and that's obviously got a darker cut but designed to go underneath the rim of the hat that's the idea okay so let's just have a look and see where we go so obviously there i can get another sort of three or four haircuts out of that one so that will put to one side for another for another one later we'll put our sanding platform in here just to give us a stable base to work on because I just want to show you we'll, we'll take a little little pull saw a circunian saw and just open that hair up um, you could I, su I suppose if you wanted to um, you could split turn but they they you know they cut easy enough they'll they'll come in too easy enough he says Once you got it started, it's easy enough. Oh, I don't want to damage my nice sanding table. I do have a scrap bit of timber that I got here just for this reason. This side, we'll do a little bit of sanding on this, not too much. And I painted mine um, yellow. You can give your angel whatever color hair you wish. All right, so with a little bit of sanding, the cross profile looks like that. Okay, let's just pop that on our head. And it is as simple as, it just, oh, Dropped on the floor. It's as simple as it just wraps around that area there. And it should spring on nicely. A little bit of glue, obviously, once you've 
once you've finished, tidy up these ragged areas before you glue it on. But that's it, dead, dead simple. Two haircuts you've made in one. All right, I probably overuse the term simple. Very simple, but it, you know, that is, you saw me do that. That was easy bit of turning. And two haircuts, let me just give that one a little bit of a sand because we'll put it together at the end. Now we can put the head, well no, we're, we'll do a little bit of painting now. Are you going to be doing the uh, the feather wings for the angel? So I'm going to talk to you how to do it. I, the, the trouble with the, the wings, um, and I've done them yesterday, is that there's not a lot of turning there and it's all away from this workstation. So I'll have to go to the saw and back again. So I didn't bother, but... I'll explain it so you won't have an issue. There we are, that'll do. That's the hair done. Now that can be painted yellow, um, made dark if you want it to be darker, uh, whatever colour um, you want your piece to be. So let's change a chuck. I'm going to do a little bit of painting on the lathe. If you remember back to when we were making little Christmas houses, um, painting sticks are really important to a lot of the work I do. And a painting stick is just a bit of dowel that you can distance yourself from the piece that's being painted with. So you can hold that a little bit like a lollipop and then you can start spraying away or painting by hand without fear of getting paint all over the place. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mask up what is the going to be the face. We'll paint the top and we'll put a little bit of pinstriping in there as well, just to show you where we're going with it. So in terms of painting, when we're using spirit stains through an airbrush, and I'm not saying you all are, but if you're doing it using that method, then what you'll find is as the, the ink hits, pretty much dry. So bleed shouldn't be an issue. Bleeding is only an issue when you put too much um, spirit stain on there and it's wet when it lands, that's the issue. So you need it to go on nice and fine and dry. Um, we're gonna use two types of masking tape. So we're gonna use, this is great modeler's tape, this one. Um, Lily, I don't know whether you could find that. I forgot to ask you for this, but yeah, have a look for this on the, the website. It's, um, it's a detail masking tape or modeler's masking tape. And I tend to use this if I'm going around any of the finer areas because it'll it'll bend, it'll move. So I'm gonna go right up to the edge, right up to the edge, pull it tight as you go. I'm just coming up to 20 minutes in. Thanks buddy. There we go, I think that's it, yeah. And that comes in several sizes. That looks to be about six mil then, but you can go right the way down to a couple of mil on this one. So once you've done that, then mask out all the rest. So this is frog tape. Again, Lily, sorry. Didn't give you this part number before, but there's the frog tape. And that's just gonna mask out the rest. There we are, so that's ready to start painting. I'm gonna carry on and do, with, do the same color that I've done with my, the other um, Angel of Light there, and that's a, a red hat and we'll put a little gold or silver stripe on it all right so let's just pop that there we'll get our airbrushes going so if you want to pan back just a little bit there then, whilst i have a swig of coffee whilst finn's panned back remember i said to you on tuesday remember i said to you on tuesday um my center racks are up they're so much better it's not uh they're nice and thin what i found with my bit of wood as you can see by this one here that he's fallen all the way through because I just slightly got it wrong. Um, but with the center axe, um, because they're so thin, that one's a bit smaller, isn't it? Because they're so thin, they, even those small ones, tend to grab. I think they look quite neat as well. So that's the center axe. Um, where are we? Right, airbrushing. Airbrushing. I'm running out of red ink. Less well, that's a good good prompt then to get the spirit stain. Uh, what sort of drawers do you have on the chuck? At the moment, mm -hmm. 
At the moment we've got little step jaws. Okay, so they're known as, well they're known as step jaws, they're um, soft jaws in engineering terms I think they were called. Um, but I mean those I've been using since I was an apprentice 30 odd years ago and for me they they just do all those little jobs that the other jaws can't do so I use them quite often the trouble is with them if they hit your knuckles they've they really hurt so do be careful if you're going to use those there are options out there if you wanted to go for something a wee bit safer than something like the the spigot jaws here um, a much better pin jaws um, they're, they're much much safer they don't get your knuckles or fingernails half as much can you grab that other roll and tape there let me grab the red spirit stain now I've as I've already said I've said this many times that the stain in my jars here just stay there um, I haven't cleaned these now we're probably getting on, I don't know, probably getting on about nine, ten months, if not on to a year, um, these guns. Because they're used, you know, a lot, I use them frequently. Um, so the actual guns are always worked hard. Um, there we are, a little bit of the stain, so that one's chestnut spirit stain quite a nice vibrant red this one simple as that now again a lot of you asked what compressors we're using now I've got several compressors in here I've got a very large compressor the swan one which is a lovely quite um, thing that I use for all my air tools um, and for dusting I've got a little airbrush compressor back behind me to my right but I thought let's get something that everybody can buy, something that's something you know it's not too big, it's not too expensive. So Finn, just have a look down at that one. Now I know Lily, I've given you the part number for this, because this is a lovely little compressor, this one. Specifically designed for airbrushing. Nice and quiet as well. All we're gonna do, so what we've got on the underside there is basically it's just a little dump valve. So I can get my pressure to whatever I want it to be using that dump valve. Um, and we're good to go. We'll just put that beside me a minute if it'll reach. Down there. And we're good to go. I've connected that up with an airline. And on the airline, we've got a quick release um, valve. And all I'm going to do then is connect it onto my quick release valve on the gun. Again, Lily, I've put uh, the link to these these little valves because if you're an air, into airbrushing you've got more than one airbrush this is so important having quick release you don't want to be undoing things all the time so let's just have a, a spray on here I'm not going to do too much because in fact Finn would you put the extractor on mm -hmm. so I'm going to put the extractor on and you'll see what, um, I just want to take the excess stain away <laughs> So the closer you get, the more concentrated the, the line will be. The further back you pull the, um, the trigger, the more it's going to come out.
Yes. What size needle do you use in the airbrush? I'll be honest on the, I, I don't know what I've got on these SPK 50s. Um, this is the, the supplied needle. Um, this is the supplied needle with the SPK 50. Um, I haven't needed to go any bigger purely because I'm not putting any um, sort of decorative finishes for it, glitter finishes, pearlescence or anything like that. That's the time when you need to think about going um, smaller on the needle, bigger on the nozzle rather, um, just to give you more hold I am so when turning, or when spraying. Um, but this is just a supplied one from the SBK50, so um, you'd have to look on the spec maybe. Lily, could you look at the spec on the SBK50 just to check nozzle diameter? Now let me just take the tape off of this, we'll have a look, see where we are. Don't forget, you know, the beauty of what we do here with airbrushing is it's dry. I can go on and put another colour on top if I want to. There. Alright, so nice and red. Doesn't matter a bit of dust on the top because it's dry. Um, I'm just going to hold that in the chuck whilst I move things out of the way. We'll put a little pinstripe in there and then we can move on to the arm. Never have enough room in a workshop. I'm always clambering around for room. Um, you probably noticed on all the demos that I'm doing that, but uh, it's like the rest of you, I'm sure. Okay, so a little bit of pinstriping. So you can use a, a paint brush and paint if you want to. Um, certainly we're gonna use the lathe to help us out. A little bit of wobble, doesn't matter, don't worry. Don't worry, don't have to, if you, well, don't worry unless you want to absolutely spot on precise. Don't worry. Um, but you can jiggle things around a little bit to make it a little bit more accurate. Um, what I mean by that is, so where is he running out? So he's running out there. Because we're only going to put the pressure from a felt tip or permanent marker onto it. So there we are, that'll do. So, silver or your gold pens. Let's go silver. And let the pen move with the with the oscillation. There we go. We got a nice little pinstripe on the on the head. Let's just get a bit of hair, which hasn't been painted yet. But you again get the idea. You could do a quick. Yellow on there. I'll pop that on. There we are, we have our, our little head. All right, let's pop that on to what we've got built so far. Just with the help of a bit of dowel again. going to be facing so our arms are coming out that way so our head needs the hair needs to go on all right there there we are so that's our job so far arms next i think we need to give us some arms to hold those candles so a nice simple bit of turning there's that word again simple um, but really is i'll give you the measurements for this piece So what centre shall we use? So you think about what we're going to do. It doesn't really matter. On this side, it's going to be the cuff. It's going to be sanded later. So I can put a big centre in there. That's fine. Telstock centre, I want to support this nicely. So we're going to use um, a little ring centre in that side. So if I centre up roughly, just by eye for the minute. There we go. And we'll put a pro drive in the headstock. Bring the ring center up. Give me 
You need a bigger. To rest. Something not too big. And we're going to go nice and quick up to around about my 1800 there. And the shape we're going to make is one that I've already made for you. The shape is going to, that we're going to make is almost like a trumpet sort of shape. So rough and gouge and skew chisel. What size pro drive are you using? That one is the 16 mil. down to round, so just roughly shape, so just roughly shape that, now we can move in a little bit closer, tool rest up a little bit higher, start using the skew. the shoulder over. There we are. And that's that's it. That's all you need to do on the lathe at this point. Obviously sand, that would be that would make a difference as well. But that's going to give you a shape like this one. Okay, that's sanded and all ready to go. So Finn, just just sort of crack a little bit. Let me just do a little bit of explanation now. That goes out of the way. So next job. So once we've got the, the basic shape done, we need to take that off the lathe. Because don't forget, we need two arms. So we need to split out this way. Okay, so Instead, well, once we've done that, we need to split that down through the middle. So what we're going to do then is split it down through the middle so we have two halves. They still need to be reworked. So the way we split, or the way I'll split this one down the middle, this V-block is a, a well-used V-block. Okay, so literally put it on the bandsaw and I've cut by 45 both ways. And then I use that for several things. Firstly, I've got a 45 on there. I've got a 90 on there, but I've also got a cuck running right up through the bottom of the V. Okay, so that enables me then to put the piece in the V block using your rip fence of your bandsaw, and you can feed up halfway, just flip the one the thing over, line him back up again, make sure he's upright, and then feed the other way. So you split him in two, but you split him safely. You don't want to be messing around with that piece on just on the bed of the bounce or you'll cut yourself, definitely. So use a V-block. So we've got two halves now. So what we're going to do with these two halves, I've already sanded the face, okay? So I'm just going to think about the cutting, so the angles that we want to produce, and the cuffs, because again, this is going to be bent, and if the cuff stays um, at 90 degrees like that, it's, it's not going to look right. It's going to be facing down and our hand is going to come out at a weird angle. So we just need to cut those. So a little bit of on the on the sanding table work again, Finn, now. So We've got a question here from Dom. Yeah. Uh, Dom was just saying, in terms of the um, compressor for the airbrush kit, does he have to have a certain one? Because he's already got a mini compressor in his workshop. Um, so he's wondering if I had, had to have a certain one no. for the airbrushes, I presume. No, no, not at all. The, all you need to make sure is that you've got um, uh, the ability to turn your um, compressor down to around about, I would say, 40 psi. I tend to use 40 psi a lot, but anything between 25 and 40, um, depending on what paint you're putting through it or ink you're putting through it. 
Um, and as long as it can just take the airline fittings that come with airbrushes. So you have to a couple of little, um, maybe a couple of little converters just to get your airline fittings just so. But yeah, no problem. I mean, there's even um, airline regulators out there so that you can put onto a big uh, compressor um, to, to duck down to a, a little mini um, airbrush. So, you know, absolutely, there's all sorts out there to, to get you started. You don't need to get another compressor at all. Um, just angle, man. quickly, what um, what size blank are you using for the arm? Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Let me measure for you. Yeah, well done. Keep reminding me, guys, if I forget. So this one started off at 150 long. Diameter, 45 it started as. And I've now, that's turned down at the moment to well, about 40, about 43 um, at the widest point. So let's get my little pull saw. And we're not putting much of an angle on this at all. Just a very slight angle. Um, sorry, Ian, I missed that one. Um, but he was just saying, question here from Ian, he was just saying, um, whilst you're using the skew, which I missed, sorry, um, he was just saying, um, you tried this method that you were using, uh, but the skew kept digging in, and he was wondering if you can have any tips or just explain why it happens. Two, two reasons that why that will happen. Firstly, and the most important one, it will be because the bevel's not rubbing. The bevel is your stop, is your limiter. The second reason will be you're kicking your handle out too far. If you're turning a bead on the right-hand side, don't bring your handle too far to the right. You want to be almost in line with the, the um, area that you're cutting. If you do, that's, again, it's just pulling the bevel away. So just be a little bit conscious of that. Look what I've done there. So now I've cut the first one, I'm going to mark the second. Because I can't just turn around and do that because they're going to be odd. So now I'm going to rejoin to the other side. Okay, or the other side of the arm. So we need to make sure that we're cutting both of these in the same place. Wouldn't be without these little Japanese saws, these little pull saws, because they give such a fine cut. So now what we can do is turn them over using both arms. Oh, that can go one side, that will go the other. So we have a left and a right arm now. Okay, here you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so a little bit more sanding next. Can you just remind everyone of the degree on your skews? 25 degrees. which is far less acute than most. And that's the reason why it's a little bit easier to use if you're just starting out in your turning journey. Um, you'll find the more acute the angle, and oval skews are a real problem for this. They bring the angles back so steeply that it's almost knife-like. That's the most aggressive type of skew or turning tool that you're gonna get where the angle's right the way back. So. Make it easier on yourself. Give you a little bit more of an angle, okay, to make life a little bit easier. When you get really, really good, then you can start bringing that angle finer because you will get a sharper cut when you're with a finer angle, um, but it just makes it a little bit harder, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit trickier to use. Right, we'll do a little bit of sanding. <laughs>
Now, if I just grab our finished angel, let me just show you the side. The, the, the cuff here, it's not right angles like I said earlier, we need a, a little angle on there as well. So I'm going to do that now. And at the same time, I'll only do one because you'll see, see, you'll get the idea from the one. At the same time, I'm just going to take that little bit of ragged end off. What, um, what grid is the sandpaper on your sanding desk? This one here is 100 grit. Myself, making sure that I get this right. So there's a few processes there. There was quite a few processes there to get to that, that stage, but effectively it started off with that shape. Cut down through the middle, cut your first angle off, mark the other one from your first cut one, and then you swap them around. Okay, now we were gonna glue that together with epoxy. Leave it, I use five minute zap epoxy literally does what it says on the tin, dries in five minutes. Okay, so 50-50 mix, and then that's ready to go. <clears throat> that will be, let me just try and get these to a position where we can sort of roughly see where we're going with this. So our arms are not glued together, so it's a little bit fiddly. So our arms now gonna stick out. Now that's what I mean about that angle that we've given to that sanded body means that he's not, or she's not, she's not stood there with her arms straight out. They are at a little bit of an angle. Okay, we're gonna put the hands down a little bit, put about all the arms down a bit to get to that point. Okay, so a couple of little small bits to do now. I wanna make a hand for you. The hand is gonna be made from dowel, from beach dowel. And that's going to be then be drilled. Now I use the sanding table here. I'll give you an idea. I'm not going to do it simply because I need to take out my centre ring on the sanding table. Um, but I want to show you exactly how we do this. This could be a dangerous thing that we're doing here. So I want to make it safe. Uh, while we've got the sanding table out, um, there's one here... This question here just asking what the red is on top is it a material or is oh it... yeah so all this is is like um it's just a material that i could find at the time it's a bit of it's a it's an mdf but it's like it's all like kitchen worktop almost um it's a nice slippery surface and i thought well that that's perfect for it it's not bought especially for that reason I, it was in the scrap bin and i used that um but it's a nice shiny surface um, I think it's probably a, some type of walling, but it's MDF, um, the, the main core. Now, we've got to drill a hole in the end to take the hand. Again, let me refer to the one that we've got finished here. So you can see the, the hand there is a little ball, and that's on a six mil dowel, which is all part of the hand. So I just want to quickly show you that before we go on to the candle holders, um, because we'll then have to think about calling it a day. Callum was just asking if you make a lot of Christmas stuff through the year, ready for selling in December. No, no. Um, I'll be honest, Callum, most of my work is done for demonstrating to you guys. <laughs> um, my, my, my work is demonstrating, teaching, making videos, that sort of thing. 
I do a little bit, absolutely. Um, and you'll see, if you've seen my Etsy page, I know you have, Callum, um, that I've got a few bits and bobs on there. That's when that's my downtime. When I have a little bit of time just for enjoy, enjoyment and turning for myself, that's the sort of thing that I make um, that, that, from the Etsy page. So, yeah. I wish I had a bit more time to do a few more bits of turning. The thing is, for me, it's enjoyable, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm turning for fun or whatever, it's all a bit of bit of a laugh at the end of the day. Um, I like answering questions and stuff like that. Um, there we are, so that's what I would do. Fix everything in position, make sure that's all the way back as far as it can go, fingers out of the way and drill like that. I don't want to be holding a, a piece of timber here and drilling into it. Um, the pillar drill couldn't hold it properly. That's a nice flat surface. That'll drill nicely for me. We can push onto that drill without my fingers getting caught by a drill bit. That's going to be horrible. I've uh, just got a question here. Um, bear with me. It's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> but um, So can you use the Tormek TTS 100 tool setter and the SVD 186 gouge jig with any other whetstone sharpening system? Yeah, you can... You can um, Use it with the Ultimate Edge, no problem at all. It's quite easy to use on that. And don't forget the BGK 400. BGK 400 is the Tormek set of jigs, platform and bar to fit to your bench grinder. So you don't have to buy a Tormek, you can just have your bench grinder. I mean, what I've got here, just pan across to the grinder there, Finn. I've showed you this before, but um, slow speed grinder with the BGK 400 both sides and then I'm using the Tormek gouge jig straight on that you know it ticks all the boxes for me especially with the fact that I've got um, one of the CBM wheels on that side uh, 180 grit CBM wheel it's just it's just a dream setup really for me that one so yeah BGK 400 is perfect perfect We talk in riddles, don't we? If uh, anybody outside of our industry, outside of our <laughs> our hobby, was listening to our conversation, they wouldn't have a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> I do struggle sometimes, and I watch it every week. Um, we've got another one here. Um, someone was just saying, why not use a paper glue joint to create the two halves of the arms absolutely yeah you can definitely do that a great way of doing it. it saves a lot of headache and do you have a, a wing template that you can share i'll put one up there tomorrow i was just about to grab my wing template i can share that <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, i'll um we'll put a drawing out for you tomorrow absolutely all right um, that was this literally a quick sketch that i made um, you don't have to go as detailed as that. You can just do a simple semicircle. Have a look online. Look at uh, Angels of Light online, and you'll see all sorts of stylized versions of the wing. Um, I'm just going to rapidly go through this one. So ask me questions, Finn. I'm just going to answer as I'm. Turning. All right. Um, two things to do. Yeah. James is asking if you can still buy the engineering chucks that you're using. Don't think so. No, I don't think so, unfortunately. So basically, just turning a simple hand. No, I know, it, it's, it's a bit of a shame, because I like those tracks. Um, um, and John was just asking, uh, he said on Tuesday you showed a bag of candle cups. Could you just tell everyone where you can get them from? Yep. So I source a huge amount of my stuff from Germany. And they were exactly that. Have I got the little leaflet? Have I got the little leaflet? I thought I had it in there somewhere. Um, so it's Rudolph's treasure chest. Um, you need to put it in as the German translation. And don't forget the dot VE at the end. Uh, 
I, I was hoping it might have uh, the, the translation on there, but it doesn't, unfortunately. I'll put the uh, the website up tomorrow for you. If anybody's absolutely desperate, they can come through to me. Um, I've only got a few, but email me and um, we'll see what we can do. Um, but I don't want to say it, but you know, eBay and Amazon and all those usual suspects. They do them. They do them, but you'll find you'll have to get them from... They will still... You'll be buying them from Germany, though, so postage will be quite high. It's about £13 for, for your postage. Um. <laughs> uh, Callum was just asking, did you decide to... Oh, then that should be... Uh, did you decide on gripper lines uh, on the new drawers you were designing? Do you mean these, Callum, I think? No lines on these, no grippers on these. So these are going to be just bare naked, parallel sided um, copies of these, basically. Um, but just so we can mount them on our regular four jaw truck. There we are, there's a hand. That needs to go onto the V block and a little six mil hole drilled in it, ready to take the next bit, which is the candle cap. And I'm going to really, really rush because we're running out of time. Do you know what, guys? I'm not going to rush. I'm going to pick this up on Tuesday because there's a lot I want to go through and you're all making me think so hard about things for you to finish this. Come, go pan back a bit. Finn. This is important. These are important. You you know, to, to finish this project, you're going to need these. I have a, just have a few. So if you, I can give give you a couple of pairs maybe but just email me I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of people are watching this but I've got just that bag so I could spare a few out of there um, I'll get the website up where you can get them from I'll do some research on those other sites that I told you about as well so we might be able to share some links with you on those um, and that will enable you to do it because it's really important that you have these candle cups in anything that has a candle a lit a naked flame on it so we need to make sure that works for you okay i'm not going to rush this um so we'll get get that sorted candles i go for the non-drip candles same thing i get a lot um a lot of stuff from the same um site little non-strip that i again i can't remember what they're called it just says christmas tree candles but we'll give you some more information on those um and I'm going to pick this up. We're going to really nail this down on Tuesday so we get this finished properly. Because that's going to lead us into a few other things. We're going to start some big projects. I want to do a nativity for you, um, which is multi-turning. Multi but you'll be thankful there. There are no other bits we need to make that work. In the past, we've been doing things like the, the Christmas carousel with bearings, these with candle cups, you know, all those sorts of things. But that would be just some basic, simple turning, but to make a nice nativity... Um, and then we're going to go on to some big stuff. You've seen the bowls that we were working with, or that we showed you earlier, the rough turn bowls. We're going to look at doing some coring with those. Um, and so there's lots to come before the big day comes, um, some bigger projects. So any questions, Finn, before we just... Just very quickly, there's one from Lily just asking, could you confirm if this is the website? Just have a quick oh, look on there. This oh. is the Rudolph's one. It's Rudolph Schnitt Schnitt Schnitt. That's the one, Lily, you're a diamond. There you go, guys. Enjoy that. Can you do a bit of um, research for me on the weekend as well, everybody? Have a look at two towns in Germany. So Seifen, S-E, I think it's S-E-I, or it might be S-I-E, double F-E-N. Um, and just five miles up the road from there, Obenhau. Uh, those two places, that's where I buy my skews. I've been there a few times. It's, it's, for wood turners, it's a Disneyland. It's amazing. It is perpetually Christmas, like I've already said, and wood turning is their main industry. If ever you get a chance to do a road trip, or um, uh, if you're in that area, you must go visit. It's a wonderful place. Um, you won't be speaking any English the whole time you're there. You will have to um, converse 
or help or try to convert us in German anyway. Um, uh, but it's wonderful. If you're into Christmas decorations, this sort of thing, Christmas pyramids, nutcrackers, uh, it's, it's all there. I mean, the Nutcracker Museum is in the centre of town. That says it all, really. All right. So, guys, do your research. Any more questions, Finn? Um, just very quickly, Go could on, you man. just hold up one of the candle cups? Just, just hold up one so they can see what it looks like. That's a 15 mil one. So when I say 15 mil, that's the candle it can hold. All right. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's my hour. Thank you so much for joining uh, us again today. It's been an exhausting one. Thank you. Um, get turning. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday where we're going to nail this, uh, this project, get it finished completely. Um, enjoy that. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.